I don't do a teaser, then the show can't start, and we won't be on our second to last episode. And if we're not on our second to last episode, then that means that we have plenty more sports line shows to film. And if we have plenty more sports line shows to film, I don't have to buy waterproof mascara for next week. Someone call IT because I just hacked the whole system. Hello, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Libby Gilliland. Is it my fault I'm graduating in three years? Yes. Am I in denial? Also, yes. A week from now, our Sportsline careers will be over and I will never be the same. On that note, you're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics, Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. We've got rowing and running and golfing and lacrosse-ing all coming up in this week's recaps. And later, LaSalle athletic trainer Sam Kilpatrick chats with us about her role within athletics. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline top three. Number one. Women's basketball is welcoming four transfer players for next season. Head coach Mountain McGilvery announced the signings of Jolene Armanderas from San Francisco State, Gabby Turco from St. Salem, Michaela Miller from Achata Baptist, and Tierra Bolden from Eastern Arizona. Number two, men's rowing has two boats ranked among the top 25 in the country, according to the latest IRCA IRA coaches poll. The men's second varsity eight plus boat is ranked 18th, while the varsity eight plus boat is ranked 23rd. Number three, track and fields Liz Mancini was named recipient of the Atlantic 10 postgraduate scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to the athlete from each of the league's 15 member schools and awarded $5,000 to contribute towards full-time enrollment in a postgraduate or professional program. Bit of a slow week for spring sports, but we do have for transfer students, which is interesting that we're getting them from other schools for women's basketball. So that'll definitely be uh, exciting to see in the upcoming season when we won't be here. Anymore. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really exciting for them, especially, you know, at this point, you're kind of figuring out what your next year is going to look like. So exciting for them to get four transfers. That's a pretty large number, um, but they're also losing a lot of their top notch seniors. Um, so hopefully Mountain McIlvery and his team um, can get things back going for, for next year with some new recruits. Yeah, and they didn't specify exactly what years the transfers were. So um, it'll be interesting to find that out and just see how that's going to help them fit into the team. Um, rowing now has two boats ranked in the top 25, which is one more than they had uh, last week, which is really cool to see that they're up in the top 20 with the varsity eight plus boat ranked 18th and then the one ranked 23rd. So it's cool to just have some nationally ranked boats for rowing. Yeah, nationally ranked is not really something LaSalle does too often, so very, very exciting there. We do love to see it. And that's it for the top three. Now let's see how our teams did in this week's recaps. Track and field had an action-packed week this week, kicking things off at the Virginia Challenge. For the men, Andreas Hernandez finished third in the 5,000 meter, while Liam Rivard and Tianga Mbombo also recorded top 10 finishes in the 800 meter and 10K, respectively. For the women, Christine Mancini placed sixth in the 800 meter, while Ola B.C. Adams took ninth in the long jump. Then, over at the Rutgers relays, Maeve Gimbert and Ella Varello finished fifth and ninth place, respectively, in the 5K. Georgia Rose Dawson placed 10th in the 1500 meters while Maya Primus collected 9th in the 400 meter dash and Navia Davis took 6th in the 200 meter dash. On the men's side, Nathan Palangeli earned silver in the 3K steeplechase and Charlie Hazlitt finished in 6th in the 1500 meter. Rowing took on the Kerr Cup on this Google this past Saturday. The men captured both a gold and silver medal with the Explorer's second varsity eight plus boat, coxswain by Elizabeth Boyle, claiming the gold with a time of six minutes and 43.3 seconds. The men's varsity eight plus boat, cox by Trevor Fawcett, earned a silver with a time of six minutes and 41 seconds. Moving on to the women who also earned 
two medals in the race. The Explorers Varsity 8 Plus Boat Coxswain by Marissa Paul, earning silver and crossing the finish line with a time of 7 minutes and 43.3 seconds. The second boat to earn a silver medal was the Explorers Second Varsity 8 Plus Coxswain by Arya Singh with a time of 8 minutes and 2.1 seconds. The Explorers Second Varsity 4 Plus Boat Coxswain by Selena Hunya and the Varsity 4 Plus Boat both finished fourth in the competition, respectively. Lacrosse had their game against St. Bonaventure on Saturday, where the Bonnies started scoring early in the first period, giving them a 4 0 lead. LaSalle was able to cut the deficit by one due to a goal from Sarah Grassi. Two more goals were added by Alana Lathan and Maddie Henderson to cut St. Bonaventure's lead before the end of the first half. In the third quarter, goals by Lathan and Ellen Stickney would tie the game at five goals each. St. Bonaventure would take back the lead, but LaSalle still fought back as both teams went back and forth. After being tied 7-7, the Bonnies would go on another 4-0 lead. The Explorers refused to back down and would keep scoring up until seven seconds left of the game, but it wouldn't be enough and the game would end in an 11-10 LaSalle loss. Women's golf completed their spring season in historic fashion at the MAC Championships this week. Day one was led by Paige Sermonaro at 7 over par and Kaylee Zeman at 8 over. On day two, Zeman found herself in the top 20 of the individual leaderboard shooting a 76. Sermonaro had another solid round carding an 83, while Hannah Bosler and Nina Okunkova finished the day at 9 over. On the final day of competition, Zeman shot an 82 to secure the lowest tournament score at max in LaSalle women's golf history. Sermonaro, Bosler, and Okunkova all cont contributed to scoring on Sunday. Their performance was rewarded as the team had the best finish at the championships in program history. Golf just keeps making history, and at the MAC championships, it's a pretty good place to do it. So it's really amazing to see women's golf having such a great moment, especially Kaylee Zeman literally setting school records for the team in LaSalle. So we just, we, we love to see the golf teams flourishing here. Yeah, it's so exciting to see it. And Kaylee just played so, so well. Um, this is a team that works incredibly hard, cares about each other a lot. Um, and to see them travel and play with a shorter season, they didn't have too much time to prepare and go play the way that they did and break the school records. It, it's incredible and I'm just so proud of them and all the work that they put in this year. I think this program is really something that's going to continue to grow as, as time goes on if resources are put into it and just proud of these girls and um, excited for next year. And it's interesting because usually when we have recaps that include track and field, not many sports are able to outshine them, but at Rutgers Relays um, and the Virginia Challenge, there weren't really a lot of podium finishes, which we're not very used to from track and field. Not that they did badly in any sense, but we're just, I feel like we're used to seeing a lot more medals from them. Yeah, a little bit, and hopefully they're saving it for yeah. the end of year meets with A-10s coming up, but, you know, it, they've did really well um, in the cross country season then going into indoor track they performed really well so I don't think it's anything to be concerned about but um, certainly looking forward to the rest of the season for them to improve a bit. Yeah and we just we never have that many spring sports to talk about um, you know lacrosse another disappointing game against St. Bonaventure it's just been a disappointing season for them overall which we've covered plenty of times in recaps and there's just there's really not much to say because not much really happens with the games. They will tie things up and take leads for a little bit, but it, it always ends not in LaSalle's favor. Yeah, there's no blowouts. You know, mm -hmm. it's not multiple point uh, deficits, but I love the way that they fought back in this last game. You can see that there's still some fight there. Um, they have senior night coming up on Saturday, and you know, I'm going to go watch and support them, and yeah. hopefully they can get that when they're going up against a tougher opponent. But... I, I love that they're not giving up yet, but mm -hmm. it does feel very disappointing, and I can't even imagine how tough that is on a team um, to have a season where you haven't been winning as much as you would hope. Yeah, it, it definitely does count for something, the fight, but we'll definitely see how they wrap up their season. And we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Sam Kilpatrick is on desk to talk about the day-to-day -day of a LaSalle strength trainer. Oh, hey LaSalle TV. Welcome to the LaSalle TV studio. Let's go take a tour. Uh, 
right, so this is our main studio. This is where all the magic happens. We got all five cameras right here. We got our camera operator. Hey, can you switch to uh, camera three, please? Switch it off to camera three right now. Good. This is where uh, our talent sits for sports talk and sports line. That's our set for it. All right, so now let's go take a tour of the control room. That's where all the magic happens behind the scenes. So this right here, we have video. We have graphics right over here. This is the technical director. They control all the cameras. Right here, we have the director. Right over here, we have audio. Right over here, we have the teleprompter. All right, well, that's all for the tour of the LaSalle TV studio. Thanks for coming by. See ya. Our story was begun by someone else. Our story was often shaped by generations before them. Our story was forged and maybe even defined by the experiences of our childhood. But it doesn't need to be. You can be the author. Learn how at numberstory.org. Thank you. Welcome back. This week, we're taking a break from student athlete interviews to offer you an inside look on an area of athletics we have never highlighted here at Sportsline. Here's Sam Kilpatrick, the strength trainer for many of our Explorer sports. Take a look. Sam, thank you so much for being here. I see you all the time in the gym with the golf team, and now I get to have you. My worlds are colliding um, into the TV studio. So thanks for being here to give us a little bit different perspective on athletics. So. Explain to us a little bit about what your job is and how you got to LaSalle. Okay, so what I am is a sports performance coach um, or strength, condi strength and conditioning coach. It depends on what school or university you're at. They'll call it either one. Um, so I'm a trainer. I'm not an athletic trainer. So athletic trainers help you recover, uh, help you when you get injured. I am like the prevention to that and the before and the after. So I'm helping you get stronger, faster, more mobile, um, so that you're better with your sport. I can't make you a better golfer, but I can make you stronger so you can hit the ball farther. Um, so as far as how I got to LaSalle, um, so to be a strength coach, you have to have a two, either one of the two certs. So you have to be a certified strength and conditioning coach through like the NSCA, which is the National Strength and Conditioning Association or you have to get it through the collegiate um, strength and conditioning um, cert. So you have to have one of those to even be at the college level or even at the professional level. So, and then for my cert, you have to have a bachelor's degree. Right now, it doesn't matter what the bachelor's degree is in, but by like, I think it's 2030, you have to have it in like exercise science, like in a realm related to actual exercise. So my degree is in I got my bachelor's and my master's from East Stroudsburg University, and um, it's in exercise science um, with a concentration in strength and conditioning. So what people don't know is what's exercise science, right? So I really had to know the physiology of the body and how it incorporates with movement. So like doctors know, okay, well, this is like a part of the body. Well, I need to know how that changes with exercise. So I kind of know a lot more how physiology works with food and with exercise, which is kind of cool. Um, but I got my master's there. There was also a graduate assistant trained to coach. So I trained several of the sports teams there, which is a division two school. And then from there, well, I did also an internship at Lehigh University, which is division one, right? You guys play them. Yeah, we do. And um, 
I interned there, and then the guy there, Eric Marcosi, he's the head strength coach. He also has a speed and agility camp, so I learned a lot of speed and agility through him. And then from there, getting the masters, right, there, I had to do another internship on top of that. So I went to Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama, which it is way too hot for me. <laughs> you will not catch me down south unless it's like on a quick visit because, nope, I'm a north <laughs> girl or like a Midwest. So, I mean, it was a great experience, but um, it was really cool to just see how, like, if they do anything kind of different down there, um, which was, like, they really introduced me to different, like, big names, like Cal Dietz is huge in strength and conditioning. Um, Mike Boyle is another big name. So, like, they kind of opened my eyes up to books that they had and, like, just what's kind of different, because in school they teach you something. They teach you the necessary things, but yeah. they don't teach you, like, all right, this is really how you program things. Yeah. Like they teach you the physiology and the background of it all, but they don't teach you like as practical for some of the things other than like some like exercise testing. Yeah. So I went there and then that was during the summer. And then from there, I got a job at a local um, gym near my house um, that I still train like anywhere from people from 10 years old to 80 years old, which is really cool. Yeah. And I actually train a lot of golfers in know. the private sector. And so wait, like waiting around for a job, I actually got a job then at Arcadia University. And I trained uh, the 26 different teams there. Wow. And then from there, because of COVID, um, I actually then went to Rosemont University. I was the head strength coach there for that year of like 2020, 2021. And then the job opened up here. So I was like, ah, oh, it's D1, let's see what it's like. Um, and I've been here ever since. So I've been here for two years um, as of like last week, really. Wow. Yeah. Well, we are so happy yeah. to have you. We are so, so thankful for you and all the work that you do. You know, we walk in and a workout is just made for us. And we're like, okay, Sam, you know, what do we do? And you walk us through everything, but we don't really know the behind the scenes of that. So working with as many sports as you do you know you're working with golfers and something like lacrosse or swim which you're using completely different muscles and you know it's a different sport so how do you fix your workouts for all of these different sports so it can help the athletes in the best way so um i guess unpopular opinion with like influencers and everything everybody gets strong similarly right so everybody gets strong squatting. Everybody gets strong deadlifting. Everybody gets strong benching. Now, all teams will do variations of a push, a press, um, but it'll be at different times of the year and at different intensities. So like, uh, example, field hockey's in the fall, lacrosse is in the spring. I'm not pushing lacrosse heavy weights and everything in the middle of season versus like field hockey this is their off season right now in the spring so being able to have them do different rep ranges than say lacrosse their goal is to build and get stronger um, and gain muscle versus in lacrosse it would be the opposite they're just trying to look to maintain to keep their speed and up and their strength without trying to build it totally, if that makes sense. So it's yeah. kind of dialing back a little bit more. We'll do a little bit more recovery. But as far as like a sport like your sport, golf, I focus more on like rotational movements. Same thing with um, lacrosse and field hockey because those are still rotational movements. Um, so stuff like that, I might have a little bit more extra exercises or like say swim and dive. I'll actually have a little bit more core um, especially for divers. So I'll have more core. Um, and then just taking into account what kind of, depending on the sport, what kind of stress is that putting on the body? So like yours isn't a physical sport. It's a very mental sport, but it's not a physical. Versus lacrosse, they're getting beat up. I can do all I want to make them stronger, but they're always gonna have these huge bruises on their arms. And there's injuries you can't foresee. It's just because it's so physical. Yeah. So you have to like account for that in a way. Yeah, absolutely. And for most teams, I think, especially yeah. ours, we do a set of abs, set of arms, yes. set of legs 
for every workout. Yeah. Why do you do that as opposed to just a leg day or just an arm day? Great question. Great question. Um, so I think we're all like, you know, we get into this like how bodybuilders lift, especially when we're younger. You're like, this is the way to work out. And like, yeah, you'll gain some mass um, and it gives your body a rest. But the whole idea is full body is great because honestly, life happens, right? You have a test that comes up. Somebody dies. Um, you know, you have a class that you have to go to. You got a teacher to meet with. Um, even in the private sector, like just life, your kids, something pops up, right? So when you do full body and you have to miss a lift, you're not like, well, man, I missed, you know, legs the other days. So, and you only got arms. Yeah. So the whole full, and then the other thing is too, is think of it like uh, if there's a whole month. If I only did legs, say, on Mondays, that's four days out of the entire month versus being able to do it, say, you lift three days a week. That's three times four, right? Twelve. You're lifting for your legs 12 times out of the week. Yeah. or out of the month, right? So you're gonna get more um, adaptation. You also then can kind of reduce soreness in a way. Like you would think it's counterproductive because you're doing full body, it's gonna make you more sore, but it's not. Like you might have more of a focus on the legs that, that day. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you're gonna hit a little bit harder, but you're still gonna hit everything. And finishing up here, how do you think your job and just the strength and conditioning atmosphere overall supports these athletes and gets them ready for season or prepares them for off season? Um, so I think, well, one, it physically makes them stronger. And I think not only that, but it builds a, a ton of confidence. So you, I mean, especially with, I see it even more with women, guys always kind of have an ego going into the weight room for the most part. Um, but girls, like they're always thinking they can't do anything or they can't lift a lot. And then I don't tell them the weight a lot of the time just because I know they're going to hear a number and they're going to go, oh, I can't do that. And then they do it and they're like shocked yeah. that they can do it. And then I tell them how much weight it is and they're like, what? Like I did that. So I think it builds a lot of confidence. And if you have confidence there, you're going to have confidence everywhere else because you just feel like you can do something. Yeah. Well, I can guarantee that our team certainly has a lot more confidence going in to the weight room as scrawny little golfers and coming out feeling a lot better. Um, so thank you so much, Sam, again, for giving us an inside look on strength and conditioning. We appreciate you a ton, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me. We're going to take one last break, and when we come back, we have all the upcoming games you can look forward to. Stay tuned. What to expect when you're expecting. A teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, no, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. When you miss an episode of Q&A, you get hungry. When you get hungry, you don't know what to eat. When you don't know what to eat, you get irritable. When you get irritable, you miss questions on your exam. Don't miss questions on your exam. Watch Q&A on LaSalle TV.
It's championship season for many of our Explorer sports, so here's what you can look forward to this week. Track and field will compete at the Penn Relays on April 27th. Men's golf will travel to Florida for the A-10 championships April 28th through the 30th. Water polo will face LIU for their final regular season game of the year on Friday the 28th, and women's rowing will compete in the Kelly Cup on Sunday the 30th. Definitely exciting to have a lot of championships and big games and tournaments coming up, so we will definitely have a good, good recap spiel for the last episode next week. Yes, absolutely. Men's golf heading to Florida. They are playing their practice round as we speak. Um, so very exciting for them to wrap up the season. They've had an incredible year on the whole. Um, a lot of freshmen stepping up. Anthony Garcia has won A-10 honors two weeks in a row. So really great for him and, and proud that he can represent LaSalle in that way. And hopefully they have a great tournament. I'm expecting a lot from them. Yeah, they have a lot to live up to, uh, especially after the women's golf performance at their MAC championships. Um, Penn Relays is always a big thing for track and field, so it'll be really exciting to see how they do there. Uh, we have water polo doing their first, or their last, excuse me, regular season game, and then they're heading into their playoffs, so there's just a lot of really exciting things happening for our teams and it's really looking like a lot of these teams will do well. Yeah, thrilled to see how um, water polo plays against LIU and then heading into their MAC championships next week. They kind of narrowly edged into the tournament there. So hopefully they can uh, have a standout performance and maybe get some wins. Um, they've had a great season on the whole as well. So very proud of their performance. Yeah, who needs the NBA playoffs? We, we talk about the water polo playoffs <laughs> and I think that that's honestly more exciting. Uh, but that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorers play, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com. Also check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash LaSalle TV and on Instagram at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send your thoughts and suggestions there. For our entire Sportsline team, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Libby Gilliland. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you at the games.